Man, what a mess I have on this table. I have too much stuff. Do you like my coffee? Keeps it, oh, hello. I guess we're gonna wake up now. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome to Wake Up. Good morning, welcome to Wake Up, where we wake, wake up. up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. We got a great, great day. We got a great scripture, and uh, today we're actually gonna pray after. <laughs> it's Comment Wednesday. Because yeah. last, we got a comment that said, we didn't pray after supposedly Monday, and did we roll it and find out? Yeah, we didn't pray. It's not there. Yeah, so, didn't. Lord, what day was it? it he was said, Monday. Lord, bless their Monday. In Jesus' name, It was amen. Matthew Matthew Cormack. He said, you didn't pray over the day. What LOL. are you doing? Now my day will be less prayerful. LOL. <laughs> less prayerful. <laughs> Do not worry. I'll pinch hit for you guys today. So thank you, Matthew, thank for you, praying Matt, over for everyone's day. it up. Everybody had a great day. We love it. If you didn't have a great day, then it's on us. No, it's on Matthew because he prayed and it didn't work. Where you go, Matt? <laughs> I'm trying to think of my day to ramp up your faith. No, my day was great. Oh, Matthew's a powerful prayer. Yeah, well, I did have a great day. I okay, think... so uh, Dennis Craven, he said, Scott, at 10.15, you were peaking during prayer. I, of course, had my eyes shut, but the Lord told me. <laughs> that <laughs> made me laugh so hard when I read that. I was like, well, well done, Dennis. The Lord well told done. Him well like well my kids. done. James Copeland. Now, he, he's talking about watching, watching from Spokane, but then he says, and I watch this with Alaska. And I think, I love your heart, but to assume that the entire state of Alaska is watching with you he's, is, is too big. It's maybe, not, not for maybe James. We, maybe we start off with Rhode Island. No, everybody knows James. Watching half Rhode of, Island. Listen, he didn't even bring up half of Kentucky is watching with him too. But he said Alaska. But he's not going to include Kentucky until he can reach 100%. I think Alaska is too big. Alaska is actually Michelle Hedden. I found that out. She commented. And so it's Michelle. Michelle, how She's are Alaska? You? We miss you. Yeah. That's She's good. Alaska. I guess you can create you become, different names. How can you become Alaska? YouTube. You can go incognito if you want. You can be a whole but state. But now we know who she is. I like that. I'm Bora Bora. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of great comments about Pastor Dion. Hello listen. from North Carolina. I love that. We got North Carolina now. Pamela, listen, you, you, you're the only one in North Carolina, but I need you to broaden, right? Do like James did. He took Alaska. I need you to take North Carolina for Get us. it all. Get one of your friends to comment next week. Uh, Pamela, that's your goal. But we got so many comments about Pastor D's. Uh, oh, it was such a good Thanksgiving's message. Thanksgiving's message. And, and a lot of people, because you're busy on Thanksgiving, you didn't watch it. How, what were our view? What's our view count on Thanksgiving? They're going to look it up. 1. But I know it, eight the million. last I checked, it was really low because, you know, we're busy on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving uh, actually had our uh, highest views last week. We oh, wait. Oh. 381 views. Boom. Over 3,000 uh, minutes of watch time. Good, That's it's incredible. ramping up. When I checked it on Friday, it was way down from normal. That's because maybe Alaska didn't watch, and that's a lot of views. The, well, there's only 25 people that live in Alaska. <laughs> in Alaska? Yeah. Why would you pick Alaska? It's so cold. Um, I, I just pretty. You can pick anything. Oil? They don't I pay like taxes. It. I love Alaska. There's a lot of good right, reasons, we gotta get I think, to be going. in Alaska. What do we got? Or you got um, more? But what? No, I wanted to say, go back and watch that show it if you was haven't. So good. Uh, the one Thanksgiving, Pastor Dion's on it. It's a longer one. And it we is pray at the end. Ridiculous. And we even prayed at the end. Yeah, let's talk about our scripture today. Dad's message this weekend. He just rocked it, yeah. talking about victim, rescuer, persecutor, and uh, which one are you? And trying to figure out a healthy life is being a helper. Yeah. Being somebody who helps doesn't mean that we don't help people, but we don't. You know, I love what Galatians says. In fact, we says. do help people. Yeah, Helpers help. Right? You, you help people with their burdens in life. Sometimes people have things that are too big for them to carry. But we don't even help them with their loads. Great example is with kids at Disneyland. And, Dad, can you carry my this and carry my Mickey Mousers? Can you carry all that? No. Yeah. I'll help you. I pay for you to get in because yeah. you can't handle that. Yeah. Right? I'll buy a churro because yeah. you can't handle that. But you can carry your Mickey Mouse ears. Yeah. That's good for you to learn to carry stuff. It's it's so important, like a, a kid first, second grade, they're, they've really kind of been getting, everyone helps them get ready for the day. Yeah. And I remember one of my kids when he was in second grade, he was still not able to get himself ready in the morning. Like he could, but, but he wouldn't because yeah. he would wait for everyone else to do everything for him, even down to tying his shoes. And he could tie his own shoes, but he wouldn't. Because Dad, why when Mom, you can have somebody do it? Can tie my shoes? And so... Uh, what I said to him one morning, because I was just, you know how a parent, you get just fed yeah. up. So one morning I said to him, listen, tomorrow we're leaving the house at 7 o'clock yeah. and I'm taking you to school. And however you look is how you'll go to school. He was like, what? As if you don't have shoes on, I'm taking you to school with no shoes. 
if you don't have pants on, if you're not showered. So you're going to get up in the morning, you're going to do all these things, you're going to yeah. get yourself completely ready, and then we'll go to school, and this is what time? We're leaving at 7. I don't... However you look at 7 is how we leave. I'm doing that with my junior. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing that the next morning he got he himself got entirely done. ready, he knew how to do it, but it was time for him to learn how to stand on his own, and, and that made him better. And that's a great life, is learning to get your own... Do what you can... And let God do the rest. I think rescuing, like a great way to define it, when you rescue someone, often you're crippling them from growing. Right. But when you help someone, you're actually strengthening them into growth. Isn't that what we're doing in Gulu, Africa? See, I think that oftentimes missions, nothing, understand it all the way through the point that, that you know, we send food over there to them. That's great. That feeds them for a oh, month. Well, no, really about a week. Yeah, you get about a week worth of food. Okay, cool. But then what happens is, is they need it now next month. Yeah, they where's my next, food next month? Next month. And so what we're doing over in Gulu yeah. is we're building a center where they can learn and train and learn to work their fields and everything so that they can get their own food. That's right. And, and that is, see, we're still helping. Yeah. But we're not rescuing. And, and people are surprised too when I say they're going to pay part of their costs to right. go to these schools and go to these classes. People are surprised. Why are you going to make them pay? Because if they don't learn to put a little skin in the game, yeah. they won't really commit. And this is just how life is. So we got to find a way that we get value when we pay into our own future. Yeah. It makes it worth something. Right? Right. And so with the kids, uh, with the, with the kids in their school, uh, if you can, you, there's a great article on uh, Uganda public schools. You can Google this. Um, and you can find out and really educate yourself about this. The public school system, it cannot, the government doesn't have the money to fund a public school system. Wow. And so their public school system is falling apart. Teachers don't show up. The well, the village where we're at, there isn't no school. Where we're going, they're right. There's no building within so miles. If, you can't walk to a school. So if you had a little, uh, a second grader in Gulu and you said, tomorrow, we're going to, no, I guess he wouldn't have to get ready for school, so it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. And, and in the city, there's schools, but if you walk out into the village, the rural areas where we're going, there are no schools they can even walk to. And so uh, the private schools are the ones that are actually doing really well. Doing and what good. they do is they have their, the students have to pay half the tuition costs to help pay the teachers and, yeah. and, the, and for the facilities and everything. And the kids are doing far better in their schooling than the ones in the public schools. I wonder if kids are watching this and going, you know, Gulu would be a great place to grow up. No school. No, no school. <laughs> what, a, what a great place to be. <laughs> well, they do have school in Gulu, but if you go out into the villages, right. there's no school. There's no school. No. And school is great because once again, what happens, I had Heath do this. I was going to do this story tomorrow, but I'm going to do it right now, is Heath, Heath was probably saying third grade, and he goes, Dad, I need your help with homework, with math. I'm good at math. I said, especially third grade math. I rock third grade. Uh, so I come over and he gets up and I sit down in the chair and then all of a sudden he leaves. And I go, where are you going? I've seen this movie. <laughs> I go, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to play. I'm like, no, no, we do this together. Because if I was to do his homework, what would that do to him? It would cripple him. It would cripple him. He wouldn't be able to He wouldn't advance at all. So what, what, you know, oftentimes people pray, hey, God, do my homework in a sense. Yeah, help me do my homework Give and me then a bunch they walk of money. away. But are you working? No, 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 just give me money. But see, that's the same thing. God will help bless whatever you put your hands to, but you've got to put your hands to something. Yeah, it's such a good point. Now, the clock is going the wrong day. Are we gaining time as yeah. we're talking? Yeah, we're gaining I'm time. I'm so confused right now. Yeah, we've only been doing the show for two and a half minutes. It feels like longer No, 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 two minutes and 25 seconds now. <laughs> 2.36, you're behind. Okay, Luke <laughs> chapter 10. we got says this, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, went away, left him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. When he saw the man, he passed by the other side. Didn't help him. Yeah, it didn't help. Right? Maybe a persecutor. Maybe like, yeah, what that guy yeah, do wrong? Yeah. And really, actually, moving from Jerusalem to Jericho was leaving the strength of the gathering. Jerusalem represents the church. Jericho represents a cursed place. Yeah. Now, who because was this? Is a Joshua Pharisee? Joshua cursed Jericho right after they took it. This is a Pharisee. Well, it, it is a Pharisee, isn't it? It was the priests of those times. The priest. Were, well, I mean, he was in the, in the leadership the that, of the church. It's the one that's supposed to be helping. Supposed to be helping. But he's religious. He wouldn't help a Samaritan because the Jews didn't like the Samaritans. Samaritans didn't like the Jews. So because you're not like me, I'm not going to help you. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, so there was, you know, the, the, there was a racial divide. There's, there's racial divides everywhere. Yeah. 
But Jesus isn't about racial divide because we all came from one Adam. We all came from Noah right. at one point. He says there's no Greek, no Gentile, no male, no female. Yeah. We're all one together. Yeah. Now it's red. Does that mean we're over time? And Noah had a much better tan than me. Okay, check this out. Noah? Yeah, the Middle Eastern people are a lot you darker said than Noah. us white people. Yeah, Noah. We all came from Noah. That's what I said. I said, said we all darker. came from Adam and we all came. I'm not allowed to change colors over thousands of years. Are you kidding me? I don't think you've been around a thousand years. I have. And you don't even know. You don't have a That's picture. Right. It's not like you have a picture of Noah. We don't know. He could have been pasty. He could have been pasty. <laughs> we don't know. You know what? Give us a comment. I want to know if Noah was pasty. <laughs> a priest happened to be going, oh, so, 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 so to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him pass by there. So now the Levites were of the priesthood, but not all of them worked in the temple in Jerusalem. Right. Uh, but a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, took pity on him. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him for one day. Because verse 35. The next day he took out 200 bucks, gave him to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. And then Jesus asked the question, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? That's a tough question. Well, of course, the... the one who had mercy on them is right. what they said. And, and Jesus was like, yeah, go and do the same. And I think that's a key part of life, is being a helper. Being that good Samaritan that helps yeah. people, that picks them up when they're down. But he didn't stay with them and continue to pay for the rest of his life. Nope. He got them back. His whole goal was to get somebody back on their feet. Yeah, get them Does standing that make sense? on his own. Get them on their feet. But your goal is get them on their feet, but then get them on their feet to be doing something yeah. with their life. Because... Like I said, if you tie somebody's shoes, they just get used to you tying their shoes and getting them ready for school for their whole life. And, and they never get better. They never grow. They never change. And um, that's, a, that's a broken system. The Good Samaritan was a helper. I want to talk about, uh, in our next episode, talk about mercy yeah. that he had and what that meant. Because God has mercy for us. And I want to talk about how he didn't invite him into his own home, but instead he put him up at a hotel. That's really good. I want to talk about I want that. I want to talk about bit. Noah. And we're going to talk about Noah. Let's pray over their day. Dear Father, Lord, we ask that you bless their day. Watch over them, guide them. Help them to help those that need help, Lord. But help them not to be rescuing those in the world that don't need to be rescued. Those that are just going to be takers in this lifetime. Lord, help us to get people on their feet so they can have a successful, productive life. Because when I am making my way with God is when I feel the best about myself and what I'm doing, Lord. Ask that, Lord, you go before them and make an incredible, incredible day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thumbs well, up. Yeah, hope you enjoyed today. Share it. Share it, share it, share it. You know, I don't think we get as many shares as we wish we got. I don't think we do. Yeah. I don't think we get any. Well, how many shares are we getting? Uh, we've got... Uh, Let's share it we'll up. We'll have that tomorrow. If you, if you know, like, we got a... What a great way to spread the word. Like, you didn't even have to do anything but click a button. That's you, it. You can, you can propel Jesus into someone's future... With the click of a button. And as soon as you said that they turned you off, they went, oh yeah, fine, <laughs> click. <laughs> Don't forget, we got the Extraordinary Women's Gala, Friday, December 8th at 7 o'clock. And uh, you can go to Living Word Events to register and get some more information about that. Yeah, it's a big Christmas event. They're going to have oh, the a, ladies are dressed up. a grand piano and a Christmas, like a singer singing all these uh, kind of classical Christmas songs. White tablecloths, dressed up, Food. totally catered. And Terry Seville Foy. She's so oh good. Oh my gosh. She is good. All right. It looks like we're seven and a half. We're a whole show over. So this let's, is Welcome to Thursday. Let's roll uh, the, the video. Because when you're in the house, it's the Word of God that has the power to change something in your life. And if you just come in the house to sit and put in your time, it's not going to change anything. But if you have an open heart, the open heart, the Word of God can penetrate and the Holy Spirit can take it to your heart and begin to shine light or light you up. Amen. So...
Maturity will be, well, when we grow into maturity, then we can actually move into what I call life and life more abundant. This is what Jesus, the word, became flesh to do in our lives. And the things that I'm going to talk about today are the hindrances that keep us from the promises. So if you get it today, look out. Something might happen. Something good might actually happen in your life if you're willing to look at this with an open heart.